Okay, yeah. Uh, welcome. <laughs> the thing you've got to remember is, yes, I am always streaming, but at least I'm not steaming, you know, drunk. Um, I think you should appreciate that. Uh, welcome to another Mr. Businessman. I hope uh, I find you well. Um, it, it's a bit of a dull day today, um, and I hope where you're watching this, it is a bit brighter, maybe in the future, uh, maybe in the past. Um, we're going to have a look at some... Um, uh, like a second year topic today, uh, component three, um, sorry, component two stuff. Um, the the thing which I've found when I've been sort of trying to look through the different um, topics for for this for the second part of the course is there's a hell of a lot of uh, repetition because obviously you've got to remember that usually when you're doing the second year stuff, you've had a big gap between first year and second year. So it's there's a lot of things that are trying to um, recap stuff that we did in the first year as well. Obviously, that's not an issue for us because we've got, not only have we just done it, but um we've we've got the uh, we've got the videos here as well so that you can you can just do a back and check so uh, i think it would be silly for me to go um to to redo topics that we've only really just done so I've, i'm kind of just going to cherry pick the ones that i want to talk about which are completely different or ones that we've not really done which i'm surprised SWOT analysis isn't in the first year really i can't remember it being anywhere it might have been mentioned in something in passing but it's not um you know, in detail like this one is. So um, I thought what we'll do is a sort of cherry pick the the ones that, that is. And I thought the first one, well, rather the second one, we did one yesterday. Uh, but the first one that we could have a look at is uh, is SWAT because it's so useful, a brilliant bit of uh, a theory, something that's very useful now and, uh, you know, sort of as a, as a business student, but also uh, very useful as a, um, uh, you know, as a business person as well to be able to use in your own business and things like that. Uh, it's not really something that you can really um, ever really avoid, really. I'd, I'd say. Um, okay, let's uh, let's jump straight into it, shall we? So here we are. Uh, component two: business anal uh, analysis and strategy is the is the bit of the of the course that we're doing now. So that's why there's this bit. But as I said, uh, some of this we might change slightly because we might just jump around the spec a little bit. I don't think it really matters in this regard as long as you you understand everything. Um, Okay, so what we're going to do? Well, we're going to apply a SWOT analysis to a specific business. Now, the first things first, what do you think SWOT is? Okay, can you remember? It's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay, so strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, SWOT. Um, and it says, complete the boxes in the front of your workbook. If you've got your workbook, then great. Um, I haven't actually put it up yet, so you can't have it for me. <laughs> but I'll um, I'll put them on uh, Teams or something, and then you, you've got access to them. But uh, for those of you um, who haven't had access to it, then feel, you know, just write, write stuff down as you go, or, you know, do it in your heads or whatever it is. That's totally fine. Um, but it says... Um, what th these this is literally a SWOT in action. So, what do McDonald's do well? Uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think there are any negatives to what they what they do? Anything that they don't do very well? Can you advise McDonald's on anything that they could have been doing differently, taking advantage of, developing that kind of stuff? And what do McDonald's need to be aware of um, that could be detrimental to the business? So, it, it really is it's SWOT in in action, isn't it? Strengths, opportunity, uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Um, what I'd like you to do is uh, stop the video, have a go at this before we carry on, because it's going to be really, really helpful for you to have a go at doing a SWOT analysis before we actually get into talking about it. Um, it's not a hard thing, and, and just having an opinion yourself will make it so much easier. So I'll just give you a second to just stop this and then have a go at you know, a couple of things, just strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of McDonald's at this time, and then you know, come back to me. Okay, I'll give you a second. Okay. So, um, if I was to do a SWOT analysis, and I've done SWOT analysis, um, uh, sort of SWOT analysis is something that the you, that you continue to do. It's not. Um, I always think it seems like a, quite a like a GCSE standard bit of theory. It's it, maybe it's because I'm so used to it, and and uh, it was a, something that you do very early on when you're doing business. But um, 
you know, you do it all the way up to degree level and, and past that. Um, it's, it is a very powerful bit of, of kit SWOT analysis because it, a lot of it's common sense as well that, that the fact that you would be looking at your strengths, you would be looking at your weaknesses, but you'd be surprised how many businesses don't bother doing this. So let's have a look. So it says, what do McDonald's do well? What makes them successful? Well, I'd say the first thing that I'd say that, that makes them successful, the core um, competitive advantage comes from consistency, and consistency, consistency of service and consistency of product. Um, I know that's a bit difficult at the minute because of this lockdown and everything, but in real terms, it is still consistency of products and things like that, isn't it? Usually. Um, the fact that you can buy a, a you know a Big Mac anywhere in the world um, and that, that distribution chain as well, I'd say that is a massive strength for them is the fact that distribution um, the, the from, from farmers to your table is all sort of battened down. They are absolute geniuses in distribution. You know, they've got it down to a T. And the... Um, sort of the what sort of the, the the management that comes into it as well is the the, the how efficient their um the the way the business is as well and the, and the 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 literal creation of the product is really really efficient isn't it and i'd say that is definitely one of the big advantages uh, that they've got so Definitely the the you know the brand image the the consistency of products the fact that you can buy it anywhere in the world the fact that you know you're always going to get the same product and that consistency I definitely think that that's the their main competitive advantage the main thing the main thing that they are good at. Um, do you think there are any negatives to McDonald's? Anything they don't do very well? I don't think the the food quality is fantastic. You know, it's it's not great, is it? You know, it's okay. It's the kind of thing that a lot of people like to have after if they've got a hangover or something like that. But it's not the kind of place that you go out for a romantic meal or anything like that, isn't it? They've got a long way to go before they could really get that down. Um, I think they've got a big problem with um, the clientele as well. I think they've got a real issue with the amount of, well, the type of people who go around there. Um, you know, I've I've been sat in in McDonald's before, and I hear uh, you know rough teenagers um, swearing every other word, even though there's children around. Uh, I've had to have it out with people. It's the only only restaurant I've ever been had to have it out with someone uh, and argue with 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 someone about the the language in front of places. I, you know what? Um, people are always so surprised when you actually pick them up on swearing and stuff in front of kids uh, that they usually just shut up after that, which is good. Um, and then they leave because they're so embarrassed. But uh, yeah, so don't be frightened of actually taking people on in this regard if, if someone's naffing you off. And I don't mean like in general. I mean, you know, if, if they're in McDonald's, they shouldn't be swearing in front of kids, should they? That's the point. So it's like in cinemas, isn't it? You know, don't be frightened of having a go at people if they keep talking or messing about or whatever. You're there to watch a film. Um, so I, I, I definitely think they have an issue with the clientele. I think that they have an issue with that, that how it affects the company and how it affects my interpretation of the company as well. Um, so, yeah, I'd say if I was going to say something that they, they don't do well would be that, you know, in terms of uh, they don't really manage it well. And that thing, I don't know, uh, I'd say that they don't do well now. The fact that when they changed it over to be a bit more like Argos, where it's not, you know, you've got to order your food and then you've got to go and stand and then they're trying to get you in lines and all sorts. It's like some manager somewhere at McDonald's has had a, a good idea. And no one uh, wants to say that it, it, it isn't a good idea. When it isn't a good idea, when did you change um, McDonald's into Argos? You know, it, it, I feel like it's less efficient, even though I'd say efficiency is one of the, the, the biggest strengths. I'd say it's definitely becoming a weakness if, if you have to think, why is this like Argos? It, it, isn't, it isn't consistent anymore, is it? You know, like you might end up waiting a lot longer and things like that. Can you advise McDonald's on anything they could be doing differently, take advantage of or develop with? I think the idea that the... Um I like the way that they, they switch things up with the with the foods, different types of foods, you know, different products, you know, the, the Taste of America range, the McDonald's, uh, sorry, the Monopoly stuff they do. I think that's very clever. Um, I think they should be taking more advantage of um, perhaps, you know, uh, like more ethnic food. You know, like in terms of uh, ethnic minority food, it'd be, it'd be much, much better, wouldn't it? You know, like there isn't really much. I mean, if you go to uh, different McDonald's around the world, they are good at doing different foods. They they, they can do it, you know, consistently. Um, so 
why not? You know, why not put a range of foods on? You know, so rather than just having the McDonald's foods, which is quite an American, quite a Western, you know, sort of thing, isn't it? Why not have some, you know, a, a range of different options? Maybe if you don't want chips, you could have rice. Uh, when I was in Hong Kong, they had broccoli, uh, which is, um, you know, a staple food <laughs> there uh, as uh, an alternative to chips if you want that with your burger. It's not something that I would say, you know, immediately involve broccoli because it's not really something that we, we do here, but it is something that you think, well, what are are you doing to, to satisfy um ethnic minorities and stuff like that because it, they're not really that mu much of a mu minority in some places so in which case you're not really satisfying your market oh yeah so i think they will be aware of that but i think there's definitely um you know an opportunity there for, for, for mcdonald's to, to clean up a little bit and and to to push away from places like burger king and things like that because they they aren't doing it either uh, what do mcdonald's need to be aware of that could be detrimental to, to the business i think i think as i said i've got to bring them back to that clientele thing that i think is a weakness of theirs um i think that uh McDonald's is so dominant. I don't think they've got too, too much to worry about. I don't think that the uh, the there isn't much that could could attack them. But I don't think that they should rest on the laurels in that respect. I don't want them to become the apple of you know food uh, and thinking that they're absolutely untouchable and that they don't have to maintain that standard. So I'd say probably the biggest thing that I would say would be detrimental to their business is complacency and not pushing and not bringing out new stuff and not trying to constantly work to 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 get that and and bloody paper straws as well that's detrimental to business um paper straws who came up with that they're not even fit for purpose it doesn't they don't work you know um so scrap a lot of it scrap the swot analysis that we've just done and just put paper straws are ridiculous what who came up with that oh yeah let's use paper straws like i used to have you know sometimes i don't know if you do this but sometimes if you have like a, a cork or something and you put it in the car and just leave it there and then next time you're in the car you think oh a drink of cork and then you you go and you can't because it's it's bloody collapsed in on itself because it's a paper the paper cup's fine it's just not the paper straw mental anyway fuming so that's what I would say is definitely a, a thing I'd, I'd say to change on those. All right, let's move on. So SWOT analysis is used to identify and analyze the internal strengths and weaknesses of an uh, organization, as well as the external opportunities and threats created by the external business and economic environments. So the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats get SWOT. Okay. Now, in terms of these internal and external, don't get too bent, you know pent up about this realistically even if you can't remember this which is a quite a simple thing to remember but even if you forget that it's internal and external factors um it's not really a massive issue because like you can really with SWAT you can kind of keep SWAT as um uh, that it kind of forces you to do it if you're doing the SWAT analysis correct um it, it kind of forces your hand to do to, to do that you know opportunities and threats you can still be talking about internal ones i always thought of swat as completely internal and pestle analysis which is another one that we do as completely external so you've got them both of them internal and external but if you want to talk about them like this um sort of internal and external things you can kind of it kind of pushes you to do this anywhere doesn't it it kind of pushes you to your opportunities well all right well they could do this they could do that yeah because that's the external environment i started talking about ethnic minority food then potentially that is external factors isn't it that's the external environment affecting them so even though we weren't talking about it it naturally brings us on to talking about it all right so um why use it then? Okay, what what's it useful for? It's useful in a range of uh, range of opportunities, range of um, range of different times. The objective of SWOT is the development of a plan that considers many different internal and external factors, maximizes the potential uh, of strengths and opportunities, minimizes the impacts is uh, the sorry the impacts of weaknesses and and threats. All right. So remember, it's about that competitive advantage. Really, it's about making sure that we are maximizing the amount of stuff that we are getting from what we're good at and minimizing what we're bad at really the idea of SWOT is, is then to gain an overall picture of all potential influences on future business success and adapt to business strategy to reflect those influences so we've got to remember what is affecting the business what do we know is affect the, uh, affecting the business what do we know is around the business what do we know is happening in the economy is there anything that we can do at this point to, to try and offset that uh, effect uh, uh, or exploit that what is happening in the economy is there an opportunity for us to to, to get a foothold somewhere that we wouldn't have usually uh, and remember, it's not just for, for companies like McDonald's, really dominant forces. This is for everyone. This could be, you know, this is this would be fantastic to do um, 
for a, a business just starting out you know you want to see this in a business plan maybe you know have a look at um, what you think you're good at what the business is you know what, what initially because then you can compare yourself in the future and things like that can't you it'd be a really good thing to just do at any point so don't worry if you're thinking about doing a business if you're thinking about starting off with a business don't be frightened of um of doing this a bit more and 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 actually being quite critical of yourself because that's what we don't do in business enough isn't it we're not we're not critical enough of our own businesses so swats are often prepared as part of the process of developing a strategic plan or planning a solution to a pro uh, a problem and um, often carrying out analysis using the swat framework will be enough uh, to reveal changes which can be useful to um, the future success of the business so if you but the main thing with this is you've got to be um you've got to be quite brutal sometimes with it <laughs> you've got to be absolutely on it you can't um like you, you can't um sugarcoat it you've got to and it's hard because if you've ever done a swat you could do a swat, SWOT analysis on yourself um to, just to see what strengths weaknesses opportunities threats and things like that um and, and it's a useful exercise but the hardest thing for businesses to do is to understand what they're not good at um, because if they understood it, they would change it, wouldn't they? And it's the same with us. We don't like to admit what we're not good at, and, and we, we find it difficult to um, to change those things. So do remember, when we're talking to businesses about um, the weaknesses and the, you know, the threats to businesses, they will be more interested in what they can do to overcome those threats rather than the actual threats themselves. And sometimes it's just a case of understanding the threats. There's not really anything you can do about them, but it's a case of understanding the threats and thinking, right, well, actually, excuse me, um, it isn't something I can really make a massive change to, but I'm going to try to be more aware of, you know, a new competitor or a change in the economy or an impending um, legislative change or something like that that's happening in the world. Um, so where does uh, SWAT fit into business strategy um, or a business's strategy in this regard? Um, so we've talked about all these other things. Mission statement right at the at the top. Um, we've got our corporate aims and objectives right underneath, haven't we? So remember, your aims are, uh, your aims are the ones that are very, very large and that we don't really uh, have a physical way of achieving. They are the more of the uh, aspiring to do something. Then your objectives are ways to move towards that. Then you've got your ex internal environment, your external environment. They come into your SWOT analysis, don't they? So if you do your SWOT analysis, it maybe gives you the internal environmental, sorry, the internal and external environmental understanding to be able to feed into the objective setting which would be really helpful for you um, then you've got your strategic choice your strategic implementation and then your evaluation all right because once we've done this once we've done these things we need to be able to like it's saying strategic choice you're going to have a range of options you're going to have to make a choice about what the strategy is um, how it works how it's going to work um, and how are you going to implement these changes how are you going to implement these things into the business effectively and consistently okay uh, don't forget the way uh, uh, at the bottom as well it talks about an evaluation and evaluation is always we've got to be doing that all the time we've got to be looking back on things remember we always talk about business plans we talk about SWOT analysis we talk about all these different things that businesses do and they only look at them once and then they put them in draw and never look at them again that's the issue isn't it we need to be evaluating we need to be setting objectives so that we can check how good we've done to them and then move on and then you know check ourselves against them again all right um okay so once the SWOT has been completed, the information can be used to help develop a strategy. Uh, the key to using the results of a SWOT effectively is to build on strengths, resolve weaknesses, exploit opportunities, and avoid threats. All right. Um, now, with this as well, businesses who can um, effectively change these um, are going to be successful, aren't they? So when it's talking about exploit opportunities, we want to be looking at those opportunities and saying, okay, what can we do to better the business? Is it in terms of efficiency? Is it in terms of sales? Is it in terms of, you know, what else can we do? What about um, when it's saying avoid threats? Um, you don't always have to avoid them. You want to avoid threats as much as you can because they're dangerous to the business, aren't they? Depending on what they are. But sometimes you can make threats into opportunities. You know, it just depends on the op it depends on what the threat is, really, doesn't it? You know, if we say, well, there's an economic threat, you might say, well, actually, this might be an opportunity to first ch change an economic threat of, uh, well, we've not got a lot of working capital, for example, or something like that. 
Um, although you could say that's a weakness, but let's say that there's a threat, you know, there's something happening in the economy, there's a legislative, legislative change, or they're going to change the law, or something like that, and you say, okay, well, yeah, they are going to change the law, and that's going to cause us a threat, that is a threat to us, but what we could do is we could change the way the business works slightly, and then we could make that work to our advantage, you know, like at, the, at this moment in time, a lot of uh, businesses are struggling because of this lockdown thing, but the, the clever businesses the ones who were in a really strong position, if it was me, I'd be thinking, well, what businesses can we buy up? You know, we know that companies are going to be in dire straits in a minute. So what companies can we go and, you know, poach? What can we go and get the best staff? Where can we go and, you know, hoover up some competition? Can we, you know, um, take advantage of this situation? Yes, it's a threat, but... <laughs> um... But we could use it as an opportunity, couldn't we? So keep it in mind, all right? They're not always hard and fast, you know, have to be in one situation. Okay, so um, let's have a look at these. So we've first of all got to do our internal analysis when we're looking at SWOT because um, if we don't, we won't know how to, and we won't know any information for a SWOT analysis if we don't put in, uh, if we don't analyze our internal factors, will we? So examining um, the capabilities of the organization or part of the organization, hey look, it starts with a Z and ends with an S, the correct spelling is the S. Um, this can be done by analyzing the organization's strengths and weaknesses. So first of all, let's have a look at the business, let's have a look at what it's doing, let's have a look at how um, competent they are at whatever they're doing and, 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 and you know, uh, try and put it in some kind of context which is useful to us so let's try and be as as honest as we can about it as well uh, gather data on uh, next review our external analysis gather data on markets competitor activities economic outlook environmental impact to the business um, identify the points that pose opportunities for the organization and those that pose threats or obstacles to performance um, decide whether the answers of the data collected reveal external opportunities or threats and we can use pesto analysis which i haven't really talked about yet but pesto analysis is all about external factors um you know so we got political economic social technological legal and ecological um and competition as well so we're talking about all those that's why i always think uh, swot analysis is basically internal pesto no, uh, sorry pesto is external um so yeah but prepare a swot table um Enter the information into the steps one and two into a SWOT table. And SWOT table is literally just a four boxes. You can just put them in. Um, and then use a the SWOT to develop, to develop that strategic plan. We've got once the firm has the detail of its SWOT, it must ensure it considers these when developing the strategic plan. So when we're actually deciding what to do, let's use the data that we've collected. Let's use the discussions that we've already had. Let's not just ignore all this. This is really useful information, vital information almost to, uh, to our success, isn't it? Okay. So benefits of using SWOT, it ensures management have considered its SWOT, so um, it, it ensures that it kind of forces managers to actually have a look at the situation and make sensible strategic decisions rather than made on a whim or anything like that. Decisions are, are made in the light of knowing the SWOT so that hopefully we're going to minimise any risk to the business, uh, maximise any opportunities that we're going to get. It should help play to the strengths and opportunities rather than uh, falling into those those risk factors. Remember, really, really case in, in point for this though, that it doesn't um, guarantee people will take this information seriously or or effectively use it. Excuse me, I'm beyond all the time. <sighs> um, allows consideration of how to reduce the weaknesses and threats as well. Okay, so limitations of using it. It doesn't make the decision for you. It can only suggest stuff, and guarantee, and it doesn't guarantee the um the right decision will be made either. Does it? it doesn't always. It's down to your strategic decision making and your uh, the businesses you know good management and things like that at that point and remember we talked about in the first year about gut instinct versus scientific um decision making do you remember we talked saying different decision making and, and making um sort of um having a formula uh, or using data to try and make decisions rather than just using your gut feeling there is times for gut feeling when you don't have the data or you need to move fast or things like that but you do really want to use more scientific approaches if you can to try and back yourself up rather than just making things up as you go um okay so the, the right decision or strategy depends on the accuracy of the research used to collect the swap remember that you know where are we getting our information from who's doing it we've already talked about bias and things like that um whether or not the conditions stay the same. Really difficult one, this one, isn't it? Internal and external, especially the external. I mean, who who would have thought that this uh, the, the lockdown thing would have happened 
Uh, I would have been one that would have said not in the UK because it's so unlike this country to do anything like this. You understand the seriousness of the situation because um, because the fact that we're willing to do this. So I think it's important to remember conditions can change, conditions will change, and there is, there's no way that we could know all the possibilities of things that are changing in the future as well, is there? There's no possible way that we could um, a lot do contingencies for every possible situation we just want to work on the on the big ones i mean in terms of this though i'd say if you're a business sort of uh, in the future you need to be thinking about what if there is another lockdown what if there is another you know i think people will be will be feeling different about this in the future won't they so a lot of it is to do with the experience of the business a lot of it to do with the knowledge of the decision makers what have they lived through um what have they seen you know where have they been in other companies and things like that he says, does the firm have the resources um, to be successful to, uh, sorry, resources to successfully see the strategy through? Do you actually um, have, is it a sensible strategy that you've actually thought of? So if you say, well, look, we've got these weaknesses, we've got these um, these threats, we're going to avoid the weaknesses, we're going to avoid the threats, and we're going to minimize, uh, minimize those impact to us. Um what I want to do is I want to spend two point four million pound on this, and then you go, well, wait a minute, we haven't got the money to be doing that, so you know we're going to have to deal with it in a different way. And and it's it's important to see the real life of this as well, isn't it? You know, especially not just from a from a, a student's point perspective of trying to be able to answer questions with SWOT, but being able to see it from businesses' perspectives as well, and the competitors' actions and reactions to what you do. You might see that you don't want to start a price war or something like that. You've got to be aware of that they will be doing the same as this. They will be doing their own SWOTs. They'll be on making their own strategic decisions. They'll be coming after you uh, as, as much as they can, won't they? Um. Okay, so I'm just going to... Yeah, let's just go through these in a little bit more detail. Okay, so it says a strength is only a strength when a company is good at something and also takes advantage of the strength. There's no point of the cats underneath the table now attacking my feet. Um, there's no point. What's it doing? Um, there's so there's no point of saying it's a strength if you don't take advantage of it. And strengths can change over time as well. It might be to do with the management style. It might to do with the, the people you've got. And if they change out, then the strength can sometimes quickly become a weakness. So the, the successful application of uh, competency or exploitation of a critical factor to develop uh, company competitiveness. So it's just fancy talk just to say, to make us better, we need to use the skills and abilities that we've already got. And, and develop those effectively. When examining strengths, a business will ask the questions, what are advantages? What do we do well? Okay, so strengths can be, and, and strengths uh, need to be specific to the situation. I mentioned with McDonald's, st stuff like consistency, stuff like, um, you know, brand image, um, loyalty, customer loyalty, um, you know, access to uh, capital, um, cash flow could be a strength, couldn't it? Um, you know, the... Uh, I don't know, celebrity endorsements, anything like that can be a strength. You know, it, the connection to famous people could be a strength. It depends on the situation. That's why it's so difficult to to give, you know, one size fits all, um, you know, answers for this because you need to look at the, sp the specific situation to, to tell me what the strength of that business is. Okay, obviously, if you're talking about a football club, it's going to be completely different than if you're talking about, you know, Waitrose because Waitrose probably get their strengths from the fact of, you know, they've got that, um, that mutual sort of co-op sort of um, business structure haven't they so they get their their um their competitiveness their advantage probably from the uh, the loyalty of the staff in which case they are willing to go above and beyond in the customer service and things like that whereas if you're looking at sainsbury's they might get those from having more of a you know um brand awareness or they might get it from the distribution chain or whatever it is it depends on the situation doesn't it okay so second is we <coughs> second is weaknesses a weakness occurs when a company performs poorly in an important area of the operation or when it fails to take advantage of an existing strength. Okay, really important that one, isn't it? When we're not actually looking at... We've got a strength, but we're not using it effectively. Well, there you go. It could be a weakness. Um, an unsuccessful application of a competency or the non-exploitation of a critical factor that diminishes company competitiveness. So anything which makes us worse. So examples of weaknesses could be management. Uh, it could be, um, you know, not looking enough at this. It could be not actually physically doing your SWOT analysis or, or implementing the things that you've talked about your SWOT analysis enough. It could be not doing strategic planning. 
It could be um, being too arrogant with stuff. It might be not make, not doing scientific decision making. It could be just going everything with you. Got being too um, impetuous in terms of just just going for it all the time and not looking through the situation. I mean, simultaneously, you could have it the other the other extreme where you are so. Um, frightened that you never never take advantage of situations as well so it depends on that doesn't it you don't want to be either the other way any extremes aren't good in this regard are they so you know it's one of those now opportunities and opportunity is an external condition that could positively impact on the performance of the improved the competitive advantage provided by positive action is taken in time um when examining opportunities a business will ask the questions what are we in uh, what are the interesting market trends? Uh, are our competition suffering? Um, are the new uh, market niches appearing? Are there opportunities for takeovers? Has legislation recently changed? Useful opportunities for things like that. Okay, so when we're saying about this, useful opportunities can come uh, such as things as takeovers. It could be new product opportunities. It could be fads. Um, <laughs> it could be um, the cat is trying to get into a really tiny box. I don't know why he's doing that, but he is. Um, uh, it could be, you know, all the way from, you know, oh, well, something's happening abroad. We, we've seen that. We could take advantage of it because it's not come over here yet. Um, a new technological advancement, which which we've not seen yet or we've not taken advantage of. You know, a way of improving our efficiencies. Maybe using technology is a good one as well, isn't it? So it, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, in terms of this, we talked about Pestle very, very briefly, haven't we? And we'll probably talk about that a little bit later on, but... Um, political, economic, social, technological, legal, econo um, e econo e economic or ecological in terms of the world or the economy. Any of those things are, are totally fine to talk about in this regard, aren't they? And say, well, actually, um, we don't, you know, we need to we need to focus more on that. We don't need to focus more on that. We need to shift our focus away from one thing onto another. Okay. Um, and threats, finally, a threat is an external condition that could have a negative impact on the company's critical performance, reduce competitive advantage. Uh, if a positive action is not taken in time, so as long as we don't avoid it or if we don't, if we just ignore it. Um, when examining threats, a business will ask the question, what obstacles does the business face? What does the comp uh, What is the competition doing? Uh, are the requested specifications for the business's job uh, products or services changing? Is changing technology threatening the business's position? You know, and that can, that can be very important, can't it? If you're up against someone like amazon way back when it wasn't really an issue amazon wasn't really a big player um i do remember amazon coming about and i remember um there was a couple of big companies at the time uh, doing similar things there was another one called play.com play.com um and uh, that was a main competitor to to amazon if you couldn't get it on amazon you'd probably get it on play and play was more to do with like video games and stuff like that but play doesn't exist anymore does it so essentially the threat from amazon was was great but wasn't wasn't um wasn't like uh, responded to effectively enough, and all those companies like Blockbuster and people like that who di who didn't see this coming, they didn't see the change to online and things like that. Interestingly enough, um, Netflix and places like that who are now the more dominant force in that industry, and um, there was a story, wasn't there, that Netflix actually um, offered to sell themselves to bo Blockbuster Video, and Blockbuster said, "No, I don't think it's going to be." But if you remember, Netflix at the time, Netflix to begin with was a um a dvd rental um thing like blockbuster but it was through the post you used to you know send off uh, dvds and they'd send them you through the post that was what netflix was then they went online with the streaming stuff but uh, no one could have ever have, have, have foreseen realistically that they were going to become as dominant as they are now i mean they said recently because of the lockdown things more than anything um but they said that uh the that they were actually they were worth more at one point in terms of market uh, market capitalization, which is the the value of all the share price added up to to, to form a value. Um, they were actually worth more than Disney, um, <laughs> which is crazy. I mean, Disney's a behemoth, isn't it? It takes everyone on. You've got Star Wars. You've got. Um, I mean, don't they even they don't they own Universal now? You know, so I think it's Simpsons and stuff they own as well. So is there nothing that Disney don't own now? All the big ones they own, you know, any of the the major things. Um, so you know, it's it's a it's a strange one, but Disney are a particularly good company to have a look at. What are are if we were to do a, a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats for Disney? You know, the interesting thing for them would be. Um, 
there's the I'd say a major threat for them is the fact that they don't come up with a lot of original ideas themselves anymore. They tend to go and buy companies that are better at things than them, which is good. You know, it's a good useful use of their the capital, their 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 um you know their branding and stuff like that. But there is going to be a point where you you run out of companies to do it with. You know, and and I think Disney are getting there. They they're getting to the point where they they're struggling to to look for expansion. Um, because they're becoming so large, so incredibly big now that it, it's going to be difficult for them to really make any massive growth or massive, uh, you know, profit improvements in the future. Because they would usually, oh yeah, let's buy Simpsons. Oh yeah, let's buy Star Wars. Oh yeah, let's buy Marvel. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, now you've got Marvel. Now you've got Simpsons. Now you've got this. Now you've got that. That's fantastic. But there are only so many things, aren't there? You know, so you, and and you can't just go around buying everything because a lot of places won't do it. Disney need to to batten down on the fact that they they need to create their own things as well, don't they? You know, teaming up with Pixar. What did they do with Pixar? They just bought them. You know, <laughs> uh, so I, I I do like it from the perspective of I think a, a strength of theirs is definitely the the branding. You know, the uh, the image for the company, the consistency of products and things like that. Um, but you've got to think that a definite threat to that company would be that they're going to run out on on massive companies to uh, to buy up. There's just not going to be the the licenses out there in the future. So you've got to think about that as well, haven't they? To think in future uh, wise. Okay, so he says here, threats. Although uh, Greg's is a booming business, there are some threats that they need to watch out for. The main competitor at the bakery market uh, is Pound Bakery, who are now undercutting Greg's on price. For all the people who went to Greg's just because it's cheap, the price will now be going to Pound Bakery, uh, and Greg's will therefore lose in a, a, hard, uh, a huge part of their customer base. Uh, Greg's will be losing their main USP, remember unique selling point, and although it would boost, uh, boost the superior quality, it could not compete with the fast food outlet department uh, in that department uh, companies like mcdonald's and kfc will always compete with greg's for a quick and easy lunch and greg's will have to make sure that they are, have enough usps to make people choose them uh, over fast food chains the final threat to, is any government regulations that could be implemented on greg's such as their recent tax on hot uh, pastries um as the government sees Greg's as a negative with its unhealthy products, it will look to tax Greg's uh, extra on the unhealthy products, therefore making it harder for Greg's to, uh, Greg's to maintain low prices and still maintain high levels of profit. However, it, any tax for unhealthy food should equally affect the other competition, which would be uh, even it out. Can you see? That's a fantastic... Uh, that's a, That was a, um, a student response. Uh, absolutely fantastic student response as a threat when we're talking about Greg's. Um, can you see the structure? Let's just break it down a minute for the structure of this talk. So we've got... Although Greg's is a booming business, there are some threats they need to work out for. So we've got a, a really nice um, introduction there, haven't we? we, we so we're really getting into it quickly. None of this... A lot of students uh, spend a lot of time... Um, talking around it, but they don't really talk about what the content is. You need to just get into that really, really quickly if you can. Now the cat's attacking the box. Um, we've also got some brilliant AO2 here. So we're talking about Pound Bakery. We're talking about other competitors such as McDonald's and KFC. What I like about this, though, is they've used some really good AO2 because they've talked about specific competitors to the uh, situation, as in Pound Bakery, but then they've talked about the wider context of uh, of other issues or the threats like the, uh, the fast food industry of understanding, well, actually, it's not just um, the like for like. It's also other things like, you know, fries burgers and fries and things like that that isn't you know pastries and, and cakes and things like that but you so you i really like that because it's given a nice spread of data and and have you noticed over here they've given they've, they've spoken with a lot of confidence on this but at the bottom they're talking about um external and internal things they've talked about the the fact that they won't be able to make pricing decisions themselves because of this but they've also then talked about the implementation of government legislation which will force them to change the um change the pricing uh, unless they want to take on take a hit on the profit margins so it's a it's a really nice answer this in terms of it's a, it's obviously part of an answer um but if you can get yourself into a position where you are writing consistently like this that that's an absolutely fantastic one okay so, oops. Now, over to you. Use a case study. Um, I'm not going to give you a case study, but I would like you to have a look at one. All right. Um, conduct a SWOT analysis of, and I want you to pick a company that you know a little bit about. Okay. So go and find a company that you know a little bit about. It can be Disney. It can be McDonald's. It could be Greg's. It could be, you know, Taylor Guitar. It could be, 
Apple, whatever it is, but pick a company that you know about and pick a company that you think that you would genuinely be able to discuss all those different things. So the strengths of the companies, the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats. If you don't know, go and do some research. Go and have a look at some of them. You can find out, you know, and that doesn't mean SWOT analysis into Google of, of a company. Um, that, that's not the case in point. People don't, that, and, and these are just random as doing it on the internet anyway. Go and have a look at what do you think the strengths of the companies are? You know, actually look into a company because it can really help you in terms of an exam preparation um re having a really good example already in your mind that you've done even if it's not the same company it's very unlikely to be the same company or industry or anything like that but go and have a look go and go and try and um, whip one up yourself it's going to be really helpful so we'll say it's a 12 mark question i'll be looking for some um you know in terms of SWOT analysis i'll be looking for um a range of different things i'll try and get some um you're gonna you're gonna need you're gonna need a bit of everything, aren't you? AO one to AO four in this, um, because when you're discussing it, even if it's not directly asked for in the question, when you're discussing it, you're gonna have to give some AO four. Um, yes, you know, saying the, um, you know, in comparing stuff. Like if we look, excuse me, if we look back on this one. Um, However, any tax on unhealthy food should it equally affect other competition? Should it so it should even it out? That is AO four, isn't it? It's saying, well, look, this in comparison to this, the the uh, significance for this specific situation on our company versus another company or something like that. Okay, okay. So finally, um, last little thing we'll talk about today, um, before we have a look at the news, um, a recession, is it an opportunity or is it a threat? Okay. It's an opportunity for some businesses. What about Poundland? What about companies that do like when I used to work in uh, pocket money toys? It didn't really affect us. Brilliant opportunity for us to to, to push a little bit and, and get a little bit of market uh, dominance and things like that. So I'd say it's an opportunity for some companies. For threat, it is the threat for 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 um, a large amount of companies that can't take advantage of that, especially luxury companies and things like that. Smoking ban opportunity for some. Well, opportunity for um, what they called um them electronic e-cigarette things brilliant opportunity for them wasn't it uh, opportunity for um pubs and things to uh strategically change themselves into restaurants and things like that as well didn't they interesting one with the smoking bat and I, i'm not a smoker myself and i'm, I'm quite anti-smoking because i've seen a lot of people you know get affected by it but ultimately with this the smoking ban had a massive impact on business because it affected pubs um, because lots of people who went to pubs tended to smoke, and and lots of people who were saying, oh yeah, they should smoke, they should stop, um, they should stop sp people smoking in pubs. Um, there wasn't anybody who wasn't smoking in pubs, you know, so there wasn't the massive people. So I'm not saying no one who doesn't who didn't smoke ever went to the pub, but the people who were complaining and saying that they should take the rights of these people um to smoke in, in pubs and things like that are the reason that the pub industry died you know like all these people they don't understand this at the minute lots of people are saying oh yeah i can't wait till the pubs open again we don't go pubs at pubs are on the knees you know they're all having to change into restaurants because no one goes so people are saying about that they might go on a friday night but that's not that's why pub, pubs are closing so massive threat to them definitely so um Opportunity for, for for the companies, but massive threat for uh, for bars and, and and stuff like that. And yes, it affected the nicotine companies and you know the the actual smoking companies and things like that, um, cigarette companies. But uh, you know, it was more of a threat for the social smoker, that kind of stuff. You know, restaurants and stuff like that, places that you're having to give give them specific space to do it. Uh, increase in landfill tax, you know, opportunity or threat depends on the situation, doesn't it? And and free school uh, primary meals, you know, again, I'm not going to go through each one of them because it's up to you to have a look at them. But you, surely you can understand now that sometimes it's an opportunity, sometimes it's a threat. You just need to give me a specific situation, try and put yourself in that. If you're struggling to do it, if you think, oh, I'm not that confident with this, then you need to go out and have a look at a range of different things. Start having to think about different businesses because... There isn't really like I can't just give you a one size fits all answer for this. You've got to be really specific to the situation. That's where the skill, you know, second year stuff is harder. They're looking for a lot more skill in this one. It's nuanced this time. They're looking for you to improve your answers significantly, not just to be saying, "Oh yeah, well, basically, blah blah blah." No, no, you've got to be much more detailed now. Okay. 
Okay, final one that you might get in an exam, something like this. A uh, chart below shows the actual and projected growth of global air traffic between 1974 and 2034. So he says, consider the opportunities and threats faced by companies in the airline industry, such as British Airways and EasyJet. Now, it says here that the forecast traffic is going to skyrocket. That might change now because of the current situation and things are, you know, these companies are going down. They couldn't have known about this, could they, before it happened? Um, but... What are the opportunities and threats? Well, opportunities, you've got to say, fantastic opportunity to, to grow, isn't it? To be able to, to take on more things, to be able to get involved more in you know a wider range of different locations, um, to be uh, improving um, you know, air travel and things like that, to be going faster, to be going longer, you know, whatever it is that, that, that they, they're actually trying to achieve. Um, and obviously a massive opportunity for... Um, what's it called as well like uh, just 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 market growth in terms of revenue growth and things like that brilliant opportunity for that isn't it threats to them obviously we wouldn't have talked about global pandemics in this because it wouldn't have usually been but probably in the future we'll be able to talk about that in your answers um but that the the we can't rely too much on this data because we don't know do we if this is going to happen but also things like um changes from fossil fuels competitors changes changes in legisl uh, legislative changes which mean people are uh, being taxed more for using you know worse things for the environment and stuff like that so we can see that happening can't we we can see competitors uh, coming in and trying to do this if the, if you saw that if i you know if you saw that there was going to be a, a significant increase in forecast traffic then there's going to be a significant increase in competitors coming into this market as well isn't there so there's maybe uber or something like that okay you can't have random as you know flying aircraft but you might be able to bring them into having a part of you know just like netflix used to be a completely different type of company you know maybe maybe uber will be in the future or something like that can you see how it works so that that's the kind of thing that you might get in the exam Okay, so let's go back. Let's have a little look at um, at the news. Uh, let's have a look at what's been happening in the good old BBC land. Um, let's have a look. So it says, huge rise of number of people claiming benefits. Yep, that's quite reasonable, isn't it? They did kind of in encourage it. Uh, losing my job pushed me to set up a business. Okay. It's almost been a blessing in disguise. I was stuck in the same role for a number of years, but now I can see myself, uh, work for myself and hopefully secure a better future for my family, says Jay Lee. Um, the 32-year-old from Surrey recently lost his job at a large UK bank as a mortgage advisor where he's helped customers with fraud investigations. Even with the pandemic started getting more serious, we were told not to worry about our contracts. We were given full reassurance that our jobs were safe. Um, a couple of weeks into lockdown, a conference call was organised for the team who were always working from home. Jay says that by the end of the day, 40 of them had been told that they would lose their jobs. Jay then decided to take the plunge and set up a new business, U Academy, which offers online courses for aspiring mortgage advisors. It's something I had been thinking about doing for a year or two, and this gave me the push to do it. I suddenly had a lot more free time, so I managed to get set everything up and create the content in about two weeks. The business has, has got off to a solid start. Fantastic. That's really good, isn't it? Um, so... These are people. These are what entrepreneurial people do, isn't it? They take opportunities. I'm not saying I'm entrepreneurial, but I definitely am because I've took this opportunity to do this, haven't I? Um, and that's what it's about, isn't it? Making sure. So ideally, I hope that this is something that I can take on for the future, which is great. But I really do have mixed feelings, which I wish my colleagues weren't in this situation too. Um, it, it is a hard one, and everybody's not going to be able to do it, are they? People aren't going to have the things. Um, what have we got? Uh, do, 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 do. What's that? A Chinese couple whose son was abducted in a hotel in 1988 have been reunited with him after 32 years. Wow. That's incredible, isn't it? That's amazing. <laughs> Shows it can be done, doesn't it? Anyway, we're not supposed to just be looking at it. Let's have a look. Um, oh, what, what's he doing now? Let's, what's, what's this? What does Donald Trump think he looks like? Does he think everybody thinks he's great and, and you know, like, thinks he's really impressive? <laughs> US President Donald Trump has sent a letter to the head of the World Health Organization threatening to pull UK fund, US funding. 
The letter outlines 30-day deadline for the body to commit to a substantive improvements. Earlier on Monday... Oh, God, he's obsessed with China, isn't he? How, how could it, it... It doesn't make any sense. Like, go after the people who are trying to trying to stop this disease. Yeah, good idea, Trump. It really, really helps that. And and then in the next breath, he's taking an unproven drug. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people are taking it. I happen to be taking it. Here's my evidence. I got a lot of positive calls about it. Yeah, that's not evidence. <laughs> Here's there, thrown out of court. Um, bosses bonuses banned in exchange for virus loans. The Treasury and the Bank of England will restrict company payouts for firms seeking taxpayer funds. Young people more slightly to lose jobs in lockdown. We were talking about this the other day, weren't we, and the importance of, uh, of young people understanding that young people are the most likely to have lost work and seen their income drop because of COVID-19. More than one in three 18 to 24-year-olds is earning less than before the outbreak. Um, it said younger workers are at risk to pay their being affected for years, while older staff may end up being involuntarily retired. Uh, the figure went up to 856,000 um, to two, just over 2 million um, in April. It says employment rose by 50,000 to 1.35 million over three months. Um, hours worked fell sharply towards the end of the month, particularly in areas in hospitality. Well, yeah, that's reasonable, isn't it? About a quarter of 18 to 24-year-olds have been furloughed, meaning they do not get work, but they do get to keep them on their books, and the government covers 80% of the wages. A further 9% have lost their jobs altogether, the highest figure out of all the age groups. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing. And, and industries that traditionally employ younger staff, such as pubs, restaurants, and leisure centres, have remained short. So that's the point, isn't it, that maybe it's just because they haven't got it. Thingy. But I do need to draw attention to this for, for people who are watching this. If you if you do fall into that age group, if you are you know 16 to 18 and things like that, and you're thinking of dropping courses, you're thinking about going off on your own at this moment in time, mm, pre really, pe really just perhaps not the best time to do it. You know, give it another year, give it a, give it as much time as you can, and maybe you know stack the cards in your favour. It's of course it's your choice, but um, you know what can we do? Um, I mean, this is dangerous, isn't it? Big sales expected when closed stores open next month. Closed stores are reopening uh, next month. Big discounts could be on offer. <sighs> Huge drops in sales. Of course there is. But, I mean, this is another issue, isn't it? If they open these things up and then everybody rushes to get to them, then we're going to have an issue as well, haven't we? They won't know this yet. Did VE Day parties cause a spike in COVID-19 cases? One day last week. They won't know yet. Wow, they were saying that a lot of people actually got into fights because of it. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted on by the news. Uh, I think that's about it for today, guys. So thank you very much for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow. Um... And, uh, hey, Disney's head of streaming to become the CEO of TikTok. Mm. That tick, yeah, TikTok, it's not going to last forever, though, is it? It's just a fad. It's one of those things, you know. But anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I hope it's been useful. I will see you tomorrow. Peace.